Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now back in late 2022, Intel announced that the Celeron and Pentium branding would be disappearing in favour of the Intel processor name. This B-Link mini PC features one of said processors, the Intel N100. Usually we look at tiny computers that are packed with as much power as possible, but the EQ12 here comes in at the opposite end of the spectrum. That said, we still get a great looking lightweight mini PC with plenty of ports, an M2 SSD and DDR5. This one is configured with 16 gigs of single channel 4800 MHz memory. You might be wondering by now just how well this thing does in both daily usage and of course gaming, even though it most certainly is not intended for that. The N100 has 4 cores, 4 threads and a 0.8 or 800 MHz base frequency, which raised both my eyebrows let me tell you. It turbos to 3.4, which sounds a lot better, and for everyday use this little B-Link system feels absolutely fine with Windows 11 out of the box. This is a basic spec machine intended for basic usage, but it's nice to see a lower end system like this on the market, one that uses Intel's latest super entry level offering. I do miss the Celeron name already, and this most certainly would have been a Celeron, but according to the Cinebench R20 multi-core score, this new N100 sits between Intel's old i5-3550 and i7-3770, which I think is very impressive. The B-Link EQ12 would definitely make for a solid everyday system based on my findings here, but I do wonder if and how it can game. Again, I'm really not expecting much at all, but it's clear that the architectural improvements over time have done wonders for Intel's lowest end chips, so let's see what happens. Alright, so somehow the EQ12 will actually start and play, even the most demanding of titles. Of course, I'm not talking super playable frames, but this is very impressive nonetheless, given that this computer uses what is potentially the weakest modern CPU out right now. I think the fast DDR5 is definitely helping, not to mention the included SSD. We do have to make some visual sacrifices as well, but doing so can actually provide even more surprising results elsewhere, like with Forza Horizon 5. I'm running it at its absolute lowest with Fidelity FX at performance quality and the EQ12 is hitting an average of 30 FPS. Forza isn't the best example of games you should play with this machine, but I'm glad I tested it anyway. Let's move on to some older titles. Games like GTA 5 and Skyrim will run very nicely at native 720p and the potential is there to push things a little higher still. I think that EQ12 is definitely an everyday mini machine first and foremost, but if you were to buy one of these and wanted to take a bit of a break from working or doing important research or whatever, you could fire up an older game if you wanted to and still have an okay time. I'm glad this CPU exists and I'm glad B-Link are using it in this machine because it's far more capable than I I initially thought it would be, and ideal for anyone who's more power consumption conscious, which I think probably applies to a lot more people these days for sure. For my final tests I moved on to a couple of more competitive online games that are generally or can be made to be generally quite lightweight in terms of how system intensive they are. CSGO and Fortnite will fare okay with this B-Link PC, with both averaging over 60 FPS with low or I guess as far as Fortnite goes, lower than low settings. Now in terms of upgrades for the EQ PC goes, you can swap out the SSD or you can add a separate 2.5 inch standard SSD to it as well, thanks to the available connection. To conclude then, the B-Link EQ12 is a great little unit at the opposite end of the performance spectrum. It's a solid example of where Intel's low-end rebranding of the Celeron and Pentium series is at its best, tucked away inside little PCs like this that pack more power than you might expect. If you want to do anything other than everyday computing, you may need a more powerful option for sure, but those with basic needs and power consumption in mind, well, this could be just what you're looking for. Also, if you want to fire up Skyrim or GTA every so often and don't mind lowest of the low settings you can do that too thank you very much for watching leave your thoughts on this mini machine down below in the comments leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it leave a dislike if you didn't subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and i think in the next one i'll have a budget build video for you so hope to see you then